In this very special edition of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we catch up with Jimmy Burrow, dad of just a kid from Athens, Joe Burrow, who's a, a big time kid from Athens. There's no question about it. We're going to talk about the unfortunate uh, appendicitis and appendectomy that Joe had to deal with and the ramifications of that. Uh, also talk about what Jimmy thinks uh, it's going to look like and be like for the Cincinnati Bengals this season. Jimmy Burrow knows of what he speaks. Excellent football player himself. Outstanding football coach for decades. Jimmy Burrow is the real deal. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we are in our outstanding studios, bringing you great entertainment and none better than this guest right here, Hmm. the father of just a kid from Athens, (laughs) Jimmy Burrow. How are you, sir? I'm doing doing good. Uh, Play a little golf and mow the yard and uh, getting ready for... This big time podcast. Ah, there you go. There you go. So how'd you hit it? Did you hit it long and straight? I, I mean, I'm just okay. I hadn't played much lately. So, you know, I, I scramble around out there and have fun with my my normal Wednesday group. So uh, don't worry too much about the score, but it was a nice day, a little warm, but uh, I like the company and it's a good course. So uh, it was all fun. There you go. That's what it's all about. That's that's what life should be like at this stage. I mean, right? Should <laughs> That's be, right. Should be fun. Should be fun. All right. So you've coached. You coached for a long time. Obviously, did you ever have one of your players uh, deal with appendicitis? No, not not that I can recall. Uh, you know, certainly m- most all injuries at some point or another. But uh, you know, this one uh, kind of surprised us, and then uh, I, I'd never really. Uh, been around anybody that had it so it's it's uh it's a painful uh not 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 a very fun thing for for uh, somebody to have especially joe <laughs> yeah there's no question um, my wife had her appendix taken out when she was young um like i think eight years old something like that and back then obviously it was this big procedure where you know it's a big scar now it's uh you know more of a scope type procedure the three holes and all that but still that's a made that's an organ coming out of your body. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at, is it? No, it's actually major surgery, uh, oh. unless it's just routine. So uh uh it's it's setting back uh, away, but he seems to to be getting better every day and and uh, hopefully uh here in a few weeks we'll be back out on the field. My wife's was uh was close to rupturing. Did Jimmy's rup- uh, did Joe's rupture Jimmy? Oh, I I'm I'm not sure uh, that the you know, we heard from a lot of different doctors and and heard a lot of different things. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll let Joe ever, if he wants to tell you any of the details, I'll let that let him tell you the details. But uh, again, he's uh, he's on the man now. That's great. And yeah, and the one thing that you have to be careful about uh, is you know infection after the fact. So you got to you you can't you can't force the issue. You got to let it. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time. Make sure. Error on the side of caution, I guess, right? I mean, make sure no infection and make sure, you know, you don't have any pain or range of motion and all that because throwing a yeah. football now, there's a lot of torque at that core, right? I mean, that's a lot of movement. Yeah, there's there's always a, a danger and, and complications for, for a surgery like that. So uh, uh, Joe's just got – he's got to listen to his doctors and, and uh, the trainers uh, over at the facility and uh, take it easy. He's not one to – to to want to uh, kind of take it easy, but he's got to, and and uh, uh, it'll be best for the long run if he if he just uh, make make sure he does uh, what he's supposed to. Yeah, because as we've talked about, your son is about as tough minded, <laughs> mentally and physically tough kid. I mean, kid, adult. I mean, he he is amazing though how how tough he is and how quickly he heals. So I guess uh, yeah, he does have to. I, knowing him, you know, he wants to, he wants to get after it as, uh, as quickly as possible. Knowing him a little bit, I don't know him obviously. Like no, you. He, he's definitely, uh, we'll, we'll want to push the envelope and, and, 
you know, when he starts feeling better, even though it's not the, the normal amount of time that they've stipulated for him, uh, uh, he, he'll want to get out there. But uh, I, I know he's he's uh, concerned about being healthy the whole season and, and knows that, you know, a setback here in the next few weeks would, wouldn't, would uh, uh, put him behind the, uh, for the season. But uh, so I think he's, he's good. He's, he's getting better every day. And uh, he, he really uh, likes being around his teammates. So he spends as much time uh, up there at the facility as he can. It was amazing to see his teammates react when he, uh, he came out in the football field on Monday, you know, and, and, and uh, observed a good bit of practice. And, you know, he had to do a little earpiece in and he was listening to the communication between Zach and the, and the quarterbacks and, you know, just doing all the all the mental things he could possibly do. I mean, he's he's all football. This guy, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, S Sundays are awesome for him during the season. But really, uh, the practices and this time of year is his uh, uh, favorite time of the year. So uh, he misses it in the off season. I think if he really had his way, he'd probably uh, want to do some kind of practices year round. But um, uh, you know, he, he does love his teammates and loves being around them and, and, uh, and, and the coaches too. It's, uh, it's a great group and uh, the, the culture and, and the character of, of, of that uh, locker room is, is, uh, is tremendous right now. And, and Joe's uh, uh, glad to be a part of it. And, and as I said, when he's not there, uh, he certainly misses it. Yeah, boy, I, I bet he does because if I've ever seen a straw that stirs the drink, Joe Burrow is the straw that stirs the drink of the Cincinnati Bengals. There is no question about that. I mean, every level of the organization relates to and respects and just, you know, it's, it's, it's an unbelievable thing to witness. Um, the timing though, like you mentioned, Jimmy, uh, it, it couldn't be, if you're going to have to have it, have to experience it, the timing is pretty good. Now I know Joe would say, ah, you're crazy. This is very important. And, and all of it is important. And, and making that early connection and and uh he just he just the body language that he reads on his receivers and how he connects with them you know both uh you know abstractly and and, and you know and concretely or it, it's amazing to watch that process take place and he's missing a little bit of that time but boy it's a heck of a lot better than if it were to occur say you know the last eight games of the season are a brutal schedule and if it were to happen yeah. then happen then and miss a couple of games, he'd probably go nuts. Well, the good thing about it uh, is is those receivers, and I don't, uh, and tight ends and, and the running backs, and I don't think they get enough credit for, for it. Is that they're they're really really smart, not only athletic, but they're very smart. Uh, they pick things up uh, uh, during the course of a game and during the course of meetings and practices, and and uh, Joe feeds off of them just just as much as they they feed off of, of Joe and. Uh, yeah, it was disappointing. Uh, he was in, uh, I'd say, the best shape of of his uh, of his off seasons over the last several years because of COVID right before the rookie year and his knee injury right before last year. And so, really, he had an uninterrupted uh, string of uh, several months there to to work with the strength coach and and work on uh, continuing to to get his speed back. And uh, uh, it, it was back, and you know, it, it won't take him long though to to get right back into the swing of things. That's the thing, Jimmy, that, that impressed me so much. Uh, when we were allowed to watch like the OTA, we were allowed to watch or the mini camp workouts that we were allowed to watch. Although there was no official structured mini camp this year because of the length of the season, the Super Bowl season, but watching Joe accelerate, you know, he would, he would uh, throw a ball down the field and then just decide, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to accelerate for 10 or 15 yards down the field, man, I'm telling you now, he was moving. He, he, yeah. This guy is probably as – I'm not sure if people appreciate how athletic he is. I mean, he has got really good speed. He's a, he's a heck of an athlete. Yeah, I mean, he's he's certainly faster than, than a, lot, a lot of people give him credit for. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, he can, he can make guys miss in, in the open field when he's, when he's healthy. And, uh, you know, toward the end of last year, he was, he was starting to show uh, – uh, a little more of that, but if you go back to those two years at LSU, there's there's a lot of great highlights of of him running a football in the SEC and and making uh, future NFL safeties and linebackers uh, really really miss. So uh, he enjoys running the ball. He, he knows 
that there's limitations in the NFL for a quarterback to, to do that. But, uh, you know, once he gets his legs back under him after, uh, uh, after this injury, then, then, uh, I think you'll you'll start seeing that first part of the year that that maybe we didn't see all of last year. So the sign of a great player is, or one of the signs anyway, in my opinion, is uh, playing their best at the most important time. And four game stretch for your son against the 49ers lost a tough overtime game in Cincinnati to the to the 49ers. Uh, but then beat Denver in Denver, beat Baltimore, um, and then uh, Kansas City here in Cincinnati. That four-game stretch right there, San Francisco in Cincinnati at Denver, Baltimore in Cincinnati, and then um, Kansas City in that final regular season game that Joe played in. Now, they went to Cleveland, but none of the starters played. In that four-game stretch, 11 touchdown passes, no interceptions, 11 to zero. <laughs> and then you go into the playoffs and he throws five more with two picks. So in the last six games that he played in, he had 16 touchdown passes, two interceptions. That's playing your best at the most necessary time to play your best. That's what great players do, do don't they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he takes a lot of pride in uh... – uh, not throwing interceptions and and uh, uh, his accuracy is certainly uh, one of his strengths, if not his, his strongest strength, a strongest asset. Uh, and I, I think he was a little disappointed the year before in those few games that he threw some interceptions and and uh, and that he that he wasn't able to to really connect on a lot of deep passes. So uh, you know, as he got his legs back under him during during the course of the season and and uh, uh, Jamar, uh, kept, kept getting better and better and used to the, the NFL and the, and the coverages and, uh, really it just all came together and, and Joe, uh, was, was at his best and, and really the, the whole offense was, and, and, uh, uh, hopefully we can, we can pick up where, where we left off during those games, uh, here at the first of the season. I know Joe was working extremely hard, you know, in the off season, like you said, I mean, he was an unbelievable shape i mean he looked incredible uh physically and, and it was translating on the football field jamar chase uh worked with a track coach and to get himself into really good condition and uh endurance and all those so sorts of things and he ended up losing five pounds not intentionally but i mean you talk about a guy that was that's chiseled at training camp i mean he looks better uh t higgins is healing up from that shoulder injury tyler boyd the thing that impresses me about the wide receiver room, there are no divas. You know, everybody's like about team. They don't fight over targets. They know that Joe's going to get them the football when it's appropriate to get them the football. And I think that all starts with Joe because Joe's the opposite of a diva, <laughs> the total, total opposite of that. Do you think that, uh, that he kind of sets a standard that kind of trickles down like that? I, I think so. I mean, um, uh, Joe would be the first to, to tell you that, uh, you know, his success depends on, on really all the other, the 10 guys on, on the offense, especially uh, when he's throwing the ball, the, the protection and, and the, the receivers downfield. Um, he would also tell you that uh, the, the coverage uh, and, and whether they blitz or not dictates where he throws the ball. So it's just not, it's not in Joe's mindset that, Hey, uh, uh, T hasn't, hasn't caught many balls this quarter. I'm going to, I'm going to throw it to, the T this second quarter or, or any of those guys, he just takes what they're going to give him. And, and all those receivers, they understand uh, that if they're open and, and the play is designed to, to, to look at that in their direction, that he's going to get them the ball. And, and uh, uh, I think, I think you're right. They, they just want to win. And, and uh, that's, that's a great uh, attribute for, for them all to, to have. And, and you mentioned it, but uh, you know, in the NFL, there's, there's all kind of, of receivers and, smaller ones, fast ones, and, and bigger ones. But, you know, our, our, our three guys are, are really big, really physical, and, and uh, are really fast. So <laughs> they kind of bring everything to the table that you're looking for in an NFL wide receiver. You know, I know it all, it all starts with what, what goes on up front for Joe. And, you know, there are three new guys, Karras, Cap, and Collins. And um, obviously, Karras is a guy that, man, every day is a good day for football. 
for, for Ted Karras. Every day is a good day for football for Joe Burrow. I mean, there are so many guys in, in key positions on this football team that love. I'm not talking about like football. I'm talking about love, everything there is to love about the game of football, the grind, the preparation, the whole nine yards. How impressed has Joe been in conversations you've had with him with some of the new guys up front? Yeah, he's he's really been impressed, uh, you know, during the OTAs and meetings and uh, they're 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 smart. Uh, you know, they, they have a personality that that fits with that group. That's that's important, uh, uh, not on the field, but also in the in the in the locker room and, and any other uh, times that they're they're off the field. So uh, two of them have Super Bowl rings, which, you know, Joe. He, he loves playing with with guys that have a proven track record to 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 win. Uh, I know Collins is an LSU guy, so you know that that uh, Joe likes uh, likes those those guys and and uh, uh, just you know feels real uh, good about not only the guys that that we have from last year, but but these new guys and and Hurst. Uh, uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna have a great year. Uh, you know, I, I watched him. Uh, work out uh, uh, once this summer and uh, he's got speed. He can, he can change direction. Uh, he, he can catch the ball. And, and uh, uh, you know, those are, those are things that I'm, I'm sure uh, Zach and the coaching staff's looking forward to, to getting him involved in the offense. Yeah, I agree with you. I think, you know, Hurst might be kind of like, Oh, this is going to be an interesting story to follow because you get the, three wides that they utilize quite a bit in that 11 personnel. Well, that, that tight end might get, you know, an opportunity to eat a little bit. And I agree with you. I mean, Hayden Hurst is like a big body wideout. He runs routes like a receiver. I mean, he runs very precise routes. They're sharp in and out of his cuts. You know, he's sinking his hips and not rounding his cuts. And he's, he's a, he's a talented kid. I, I yeah, you can, uh, w without really knowing, uh, Everything there is to know about their offense, uh, I'm sure you can uh, you can you can split him out and and get in a, uh, a little coach's lingo here, ten personnel look and yep. and see how how they're lining up and motioning back in and and uh, you know we we did that some last year with CJ and that was a big part of uh, uh, LSU's offense uh, with with uh, Thaddeus Moss uh, because uh, you know those guys could split out and dictate the coverage and then you can you can kind of joe has a pre-snap read and when he has a pre-snap read then then he he has a great idea of where to where to go with the ball uh, on his first look no doubt if you move the tight end around and make the defense declare a guy as smart as joe whoo that's uh that's that's a huge huge advantage let me take you back to uh when you first found out that joe had the uh the appendix appendicitis attack i mean what <laughs> What, what was your first thought when you got the phone call or got, you know, you find out as a dad that uh, your son is uh, yeah. in the situations and what was that like? Well, it's always, uh, uh, you know, frustrating. And, and uh, when you, when you get that phone call and, and uh, you know, the first thing that probably goes through your mind as a parent, is he, is he okay first? And then, uh, you know, two, you just, you start feeling bad that, uh, uh, you know, he's got to go to and go through another uh, ever so ha ever how many so weeks of, of uh, basically uh, rehabbing to, to get back to normal. So uh, um, but, you know, Joe uses things like that for for motivation. And, uh, you know, we basically spent the whole week with him and uh, uh, in, in Cincinnati. And that's uh, you know, that's something we don't we don't do a whole lot of anymore. So the the, the negative was. You know, he was moving kind of slow, but the positive, we, we got to spend a lot of time with him last week. So mom was making him some chicken soup as such. She was taking, <laughs> taking care of things a little well, bit. Well, he, he, his appetite wasn't great. So we, we, uh, he, he wasn't eating his, his, his mom's cooking like he normally does. But uh, maybe we'll get back over there this weekend and, and see if we can put, put those pounds on him that he might have lost. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, – so how much time do you think he's spending – with the mental part of the game right now, how much tape is he looking at? Yeah. How much, how much is he diving into like, you know, not just the X's and O's, but everything beyond the X's and O's. How, how, how is he doing? Well, he had his iPad at the, at the hospital. So I, he, he was, he, he didn't, uh, 
uh, go very long without uh, watching some of their practices. And, and, right. uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure right now. I, I would, I would think he's in, he's in most of the meetings. Um, uh, I, I'm not sure if he's at practice, uh, uh, every day. I think that first day, as, as you said, he was on the golf cart and, right. and, uh, had the headsets on and was communicating, um, yesterday. I'm, I don't think he was out there and, oh, and he wasn't. Uh, but right. there's certain, you know, things that he's, he's got to do, uh, off the field to, to, to get back ready and healthy to, to play. But, uh, I don't think he missed as many of the meetings, put it that way. That's a big part of, of his game and his preparation. And, and as I said before, it's one of his favorite things to do is, is be around those guys and watch film and, and, uh, uh, you know, get ready for the season. You know, one, one part of being uh, tough minded is when you do have an injury, the rehab part of it can be brutal mentally. I mean, it can be just such a grind and he's unfortunately he's had, he's had to experience it more than once. And I, I, he's probably, I'm not saying it's old hat. I mean, you never welcome it or anything like that. But if anybody can handle it, it's Joe Burrow because he's handled it unbelievably well, you know, times before, that's for sure. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's he's pretty resilient when it comes to, to, to uh, bouncing back. And, uh, you know, he had a, a lot of support. Um, uh, you know, everybody, uh, a lot of, a lot of his, uh, the coaching staff and Mr. Brown uh, reached out to him and, uh, the, the doctors were, were awesome. Uh, I got a chance to meet, meet the, the new trainer, Matt, and, and, uh, uh, you know, he was very supportive and, and, uh, we couldn't have been happier with, with the, the way, uh, you know, Joe was treated, uh, uh, in, 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 the in the hospital and, and, uh, with those guys showing their their support of Joe, that that meant a lot to to Joe and and uh, his mom and I. Yeah, I mean, talk about you know trainers and team doctors and everything with respect to football. I mean, there's a lot of injuries that happen during the course of practice or games. Appendicitis isn't one that's like like we talked about. You coached for a long time and you never had to deal with any any uh, buddy that had that malady. I mean, th this is an an unusual one, and I guess probably the. Uh, the, the protocol for rehab is it's, it's probably a little bit unique, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I know uh, uh, some some of the doctors re reached out to some some uh, uh, other physicians in the NFL to to just see you know what their time frame was with with any quarterback that might have had that. I'm not sure of the details, but I know that happened. So uh, uh, it's it's not a, a you know a, a four day or, or one week uh, process. It, uh, it just depends on, on, uh, you know, how, how everything heals. And, and as you said, no comp, hopefully no complications. And, uh, uh, it, you just have to take your time, listen to the, to the, uh, instructions of, of the people that know best and, and, uh, and get ready to go and have, you know, at least for sure, a, a, a goal. I'm, I, I think of for, for Joe to be back that, first game to, to, to be able to play. I know that's what he, he wants to, he, I think he heard Matt Cat Castle of the chiefs way back played after about 11 or 12 days. But so his, he, he got pretty excited when he heard that, but uh, you, you know, you don't know the details of, of, uh, of, of that surgery as opposed to this one. And, and, uh, uh, but, but as we keep saying, you just can't rush it. You, you got to look uh, not only for uh uh, you know, what's, what's best, uh, for, for Joe, uh, right away, what's best for Joe and the team in the future too. And you can't, you can't have any setbacks in this. I agree a hundred thousand percent. And just like any injury, I mean, every knee injury is different. Every surgery is different. Every rehab is different. You know, every appendicitis attack is not the same. I mean, they're all different surgeries, different rehabs, different. Um, I know one thing I would have no problem whatsoever if Joe's in bubble wrap the entire preseason, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, maybe do a little bit against the Rams. But Rams, when they're in town for those controlled environment practices, those practices might be – that defense is so good, they, that might be helpful. But, I mean, you don't, you don't want to get hit either. That's yeah. the thing. You got to make sure even accidentally, you know, if the pockets collapse and whatever, you don't you don't want to take a chance on, uh, on any kind of contact. That's for sure. So – yeah, I would bubble wrap him until Pittsburgh, 
There was no question about it in my mind. And, and I'll tell you what, as an off, as a former offensive lineman, my number one thought right now is I do not want Joe Burrow to get hit one bit. Never mind sacked. I don't want the dude to get hit. <laughs> I, I would, well, I, I like that mindset. Um, oh man, that'd uh, be my that'd be my goal. And to I keep him upright. <laughs> I, I think those were they're all on the same page. Uh, you, you know about that. And uh, uh, Joe's pretty good about knowing uh, how many reps he needs. Does he need more? Uh, uh, th those type things. He also, you know, has a, a good understanding of of his health and his body. And and uh, uh, so, you know, they'll, they'll work it out and they'll have a good plan and, and, uh, it'll be baby steps at first. And, and, and then, uh, uh, at some point he'll, he'll be out there at least, uh, you know, full, full go in practice. That, that doesn't mean getting hit and those type things, but at least taking the reps that, uh, that he knows he needs. You know, watching him adapt to like, like, a um, undrafted rookie out of Kansas, this kid Kwame Lasseter runs nice routes. I mean, he's not going to set any world records running away from you. But Fred Bolitnikoff didn't do that either. And he got open. He ran great routes. <laughs> this Kwame Lasseter guy, you know, it seems to – and Joe, I mean, just watching Joe study his – the way he ran, his body language, and how he got in and out of cuts. He established a report, that guy. So I was like, man, those guys are in a nice sink right now. Joe really likes throwing to this kid. So it does – you're right. It doesn't take yeah. Joe very long to get a guy figured out, does it? No, it doesn't. And, and uh, Kwame, uh, I, I know the head coach uh, at Kansas, Lance Leipel. Uh, he's been a good friend. I actually worked with him once at uh, Nebraska. So uh, we, we talked about Kwame. He thinks he's a great team player and uh, in his mind can, can, uh, can, can play in the NFL and, and make a contribution. So I know Joe likes him. thought he did a good job in the OTAs. You mentioned Fred Belitnikoff. I, I played with Fred in Montreal. Uh, after his Raider uh, days, uh, he came and played with us. He, he just oh. talking about somebody that just loved football. Right. And, and uh, uh, yes, he was slow, but he was still uh, a, a great uh, receiver and, and had all the moves and, and the experience. So uh, <laughs> uh, he was a character and, and fun to be around. So uh, uh, a couple of guys you, you mentioned there that, that I've, I've had at least a relationship with Fred and then with Kwame's coach over the years. That's very interesting. I'll tell you, that's a, you've uh, you're a you're a football lifer. There there are no two <laughs> ways about that. Has uh, like the second half of the season uh, for the Bengals after the bye, uh, the, the, the final eight games, I should say. Man, that's a that's a a grind. It's it's a yeah. There's, there's a minefield every week. There is Joe excited about you know the, the, how the schedule pans out this year and the, uh, the competition that he's going to be going up against. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't really look at it too much, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, uh, just kind of the cliche, take him one, one, uh, one day at a time. But uh, I think Zach, uh, knowing the, the way they practice and, and uh, how he goes about uh, keeping those guys fresh, I, I think he did an awesome job uh, last year of, uh, of bringing those guys uh, along during the course of, uh, I guess, what was it, 22 games. Yeah, and uh, uh, he, he understands that that it is a long season, and uh, you know you you can't just go out there and and uh, ground ground these guys in, into the pound these guys into the ground uh, uh, every day, and and uh, they're professionals. They know what they need to do to to get get ready. And as I said, the the coaching staff does a, a really a great job of, of getting them ready. Yeah, they do. I mean, they the recovery time, they understand that, and the players respond to it. And there's just such a – I think we've talked about this before, Jimmy. I mean, there's no jerk factor on this football team. I've been in the locker room now for a few days, and the new guys they brought in, every single person is a team guy. It's yeah. it, it's we, us. It's not I, me. They're all rowing the boat in the same direction. You know, it's it, it's it's really a, a – Interesting environment to, to observe. It really is. And that, I mean, that's a credit to to really, uh, you know, Mr. Brown and, and the the scouting department. Uh, uh, you know, all, all those guys that that I think character does does mean a, a, a lot into the the type of people they're drafting and, and bringing in. And and uh, 
you know, they do a lot of, of, of work, not just film work, but trying to, to see if, if, a, if a guy, you know, has uh, what it takes to, to fit into a, to an NFL locker room. And, and I think those guys uh, uh, do a great job. And then that, that trickles down to the, to the coaching staff and then the support staff and, and then the team buys into it. And, and uh, you, you got the culture now that uh, has, has developed the last couple of years into uh, what, what, what you're seeing in the locker room and what you're seeing on the field. No question about it. Well, I think we should put maybe a couple other words. Just a very special kid from Athens. Maybe that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that, that's my T-shirt. I mean, uh, uh, Joe would be the – I get in a little trouble when I say that. Uh, we, Joe actually uh, grew up – we live in the in the Plains, and, and Athens High School is in the Plains. So if you say uh, – there, there's a sign coming into the plains, you know, home of Joe Burrell. So sometimes right. uh, they're offended if you say he's from Athens, but uh, you, you know, that's, that's really what Joe is just a kid from, from Athens in the plains, Southeast Ohio. And, and uh, all the people around here have been awesome in their support of Joe. And uh, we've turned some Browns fans and some Steeler fans into in the Bengal fans. And we're still working on uh, quite a few of them here in town. That's awesome. Jimmy, uh, Here's to a, another great year. Look forward to seeing you at, uh, at the Super Bowl out in Arizona, man. <laughs> all right. I, I'm, I'm all into uh, warm weather in uh, January, so let's go. I hear you, Coach. <laughs> Thanks very much for right. taking time Thanks with us. Thanks a lot. Have a good day. You too, Jimmy. Thanks. Our 1 million YouTube view giveaways contest, courtesy First Star Logistics, continues with a special contest that runs until August 7th, 9 o'clock. So you have plenty of time. But don't procrastinate. Don't wait, because prizes include two tickets to a Cincinnati Reds game in the Boone County Bourbon Room with Dave Lapham. That would be me. Two tickets to Cincinnati Reds game in the Boone County Bourbon Club with a celebrity to be determined later. And I know you're going to like that. It's big time. A signed Dave Lapham jersey. First Star Logistics custom backpack filled with apparel and gear. A $300 value. Very nice prize. Two $50 gas cards. Want the price of gas today? Nice to enter. Just go to the link and description below or scan the QR code. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. <laughs> Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right. You yeah. know that. That body right that's there. right yes sir. become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent check out firststarlogistics.com